just gained money over the years and over the years. Everywhere they go. God's loved all the world. So why God chose other people if he loved everyone? Just, why he chose people? I just thought it. Is it all? Yeah. Um, the thing is, did Christ die for sinners? Who is it? Not everyone. When Christ died on that right, just when Christ died on that cross, and and he was on that cross. Let, let's just read this. Let's just read this. It says here. Isaiah 53. Yeah. Can you explain to me what this means? Tell me what this means. Okay. Okay. Before you even start, I'm new, I'm new into Bible. I've got to study don't worry, now. don't worry, don't Can worry, I mean? don't worry, mate. I'm not gonna, I'm not here to. We're having a friendly discussion, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know, man. No, no. It says here, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison, from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Now here's the verse. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He's talking about he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we healed. So here's the point. Forget about Israelites and, and what I believe and what you believe. He's talking there about Christ, the Messiah, being punished for our sin. The question is, in your life, do you understand that when Christ died on that cross and took the punishment for your sin, that it was for your sin? And, and, and do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died on your behalf for your sin? Yes, I do. And do you believe that Jesus Christ is God incarnate? Please, um, the, how would you mean God? Well, Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am, which is the name of God. See, do you believe this, Jesus is God in the flesh? We all, as a nation of Israel, we all, as a God, compared to the other people. Because we are the sons of God. The reason I know this is because from my culture, it's not even from this book. This book is a translated, translated book of my book. We have this book in Africa, the original book written in original Hebrew. We speak the original Hebrew back in Africa. Okay, listen. I'm not going to argue with that. The, yeah, yeah. The, the main issue that I've got is I want you to know for sure that you're going to go to heaven. Uh, I'm and, not, I'm, I and, don't know yeah. for sure because even the, even uh, the nation of Israel, only one third is going to inhabit that heaven. But let Two thirds is going to be cut off. Let me show you this. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the prayers of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. Here it is. Verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. My dear friend, my dear, dear friend, there are riches of God's grace that he wants for you. Us, we know. And he wants you to have that peace. And he wants you to know that grace, my friend. How? How we, how we should do and that? The way you know it is by believing in Jesus, the Messiah. No, it's by doing the actions. No, no, no. Yeah, Let yes, me show you. Let me show you. keeping the, 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 the laws and the commitments. Okay, let's, let's have a look at the Bible. That's the love in the Bible. Love is keeping the God's law. Let, let's have a look. Let's have a look. It says here, chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 16. It says, And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. So the cross is, is slain the enmity of God. God's no longer going to judge us with wrath and send us to hell because of the cross, because Jesus died. And then if you read further on, it says, chapter 2, 3 verse 7, where I was made a minister according to the gift of grace given unto me by the effectual working of his power. 
But to me who am less than the least of the saints is the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Who are the Gentiles? Wait, wait a minute. The unsearchable riches of Christ. The riches of Christ. Mm. Paul wants to preach the riches of Christ. Okay. Well, okay. Here in this verse particularly, why the Gentiles are the riches of Christ? Because they've been in captivity in Greek and they've been lost, been following the other people, the adopting other people's tradition and culture. Right. So that's why the Paul worked there to save them, to bring them back to their own culture. Like the people now here in England and in yeah. Europe, they've been they're taken as a slave in 1916 and they lost now. They lost their culture, right. yeah. their heritage, their language, they lost everything. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the people that they are going to be saving. Right, okay. When what, you what are they talking about? You understand who you are. He's a Hebrew Israelite. He's a Hebrew Israelite, so he, he, you believe that there's a special message for Hebrew Israelites. Yeah? It's, it's, it's the whole world is a message because of us. The Can whole I just... world is a message because of us. So we should keep this, our forefathers kept this book safe and follow and keep the commitment. They mess, they play around, the most has said, do you know what? Go to slavery. The punishment. You're so Hebrew. We are living our punishment right now. Oh, let's wait till you know. The thing is, if you died right now, do you know that you're saved? I'm, I would get reflected. Do you know that you're saved? I, how do you mean? You have forgiveness. Do you have forgiveness of sin right now? Yeah. 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 Are you but I'm not sure. Right. I don't know. So what Jesus came from? Because I'm not keeping the law. Jesus what? came to make sure he, he, when he came to live, he said, okay, the, the old testament is gone, now follow me. No. Not the, the smallest letter will go out. Will be dropped. So people need to, he came to remind the people again. And you not need come to, to destroy this. the law. And yes. not come to destroy the law of the prophets. So why but it came to fulfill? So why were the hands like he came to people like okay, leave the old testament now? Just say Jesus live and died in Christ. You say, uh, uh, where did that come from? Well, the Jews are God's people. The Jews are God's people. And God, God spoke to me one night. He said, He said, I'm sending you to my people, to see the Jews, to tell them about Jesus, the offer of salvation, the freedom and the forgiveness that, that Yahweh, that Yahweh, when Yahweh became became a man and took our sins upon Himself. You see, you is only one tribe. There's another 12, 11 tribes from the nation of Israel. The Jew oh, is well, a one tribe. Well, let, let. It's a it's a false the false son of, of Jacob. Okay. His descendant known as the tribe of Judah. Okay. That's where the Jesus, yeah. Jesus Christ Abraham, came from. Let, let, let me just read the passage to get it in focus. Daniel, Daniel, if you could just focus that, yeah. It says here in Galatians. Mm. It says, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins. Mm that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God our Father. So he's saying the grace, like my friend here was saying, George, saying that it's this, this time for our sin. And then he goes this, he says this, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So here I am now, you've got two minutes to tell me what the gospel is and I'll explain to you what the gospel is. What is the gospel? The gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel, yeah. You got two minutes. Okay. Just tell from me. my opinion, yeah. from what I know, the gospel is to keep the law and the commandment alive. That's the gospel. Okay. I'm going to ask my brother, brother George. Can you just come here? Because this is this is my opinion. All right. What is the gospel, George? The gospel is the fact that uh, God saw a soul, a, a fallen human race who had no chance of no chance of salvation. Uh, he saw us all fall and we all inherited a sin nature from our, fel from our forefathers, Adam and Eve. We are all children of Adam and Eve. Who is that nation that just, has just, no just tell the But anyway, God became a man 2,000 years ago and came to this earth and told us things that no one's ever heard before. Jesus Christ came and he told us that we have an eternal soul, that we will either spend eternity in heaven or in hell. Jesus was the biggest hellfire preacher who has ever walked the face of this planet. He was the only one who truly know, knew what happens to man when he dies. And Jesus Christ said, Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death into life. When the devil accuses us before the Father, Jesus shows his hands 
and says, this is my child, I bore his sin. Because Jesus was completely sinless. Jesus said, which of you convicts me of sin? Yeah. No, one, no one could convict him of sin. So Jesus was perfect before the eyes of the Father. He was holy. He lived there. He fulfilled the law. Jesus fulfilled the requirements of the law from the moment he was born. And the wise men worshipped him when he was born. They, they worshipped him. And no one is allowed to be worshipped other than God. Jesus isn't just a prophet. He's not, he's not just like what the Jehovah's Witnesses say. They, they just say he's a son of God. Jesus is God in the flesh. And he who, who hears his word and believes in him who sent him will not come into judgment. We won't be judged for our sins. We'll be forgiven. We'll be set free. We, the, Jesus said to me, I said, please forgive me of something that I've got to battle with. He said, what thing? Well, I, I, I said, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about, Joe. You see, when, when, we are, when we're cleansed with the blood of the Lamb, His blood, the, the, in the Old Testament it said, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Without, without the shed, this is why they used to have the uh, lamb sacrifices, the bulls and the goats, as a sin offering. Because without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. But Jesus Christ came, and by His blood, by His stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53. Prophet, the very day was prophesied in Daniel 9.24. Now therefore understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, until Messiah, the Prince, there shall be 60, 60 weeks and 67 weeks, 60 weeks and 7 weeks. Then, then Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. Messiah was cut off for the sins of, of, of everyone. Of everyone who would call upon his name, he, he bore the sin of the world. He took the almighty wrath of God. Amen. Thanks, John. So, he's explained the gospel there. That, that's what the gospel is. We're, we're trying to. It, 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 I couldn't have done it better. He, he, he's explained that. Do you understand that Christ died? All this argument about um, the black Israelites and all the rest of it. That that's a secondary issue. The main issue is this knowing Christ yourself. Yeah, that Christ died for you. Does that make sense? Where's the name Christ came from? Listen, listen, listen. The Bible warns us. The Bible warns us. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. The Bible warns us not to be just arguing and arguing. It's very, the, the message. The message he's just said is very simple, right? We, we can ask. You, yeah, but these questions are just going to bog us down into nitty-gritty arguments that's about about words. That's yeah. No, I'm, I'm not here. Yeah, but I'm not here to just argue about nitty-nitty-gritty things. Nitty-nitty-gritty things. I, I don't mind debating, but the simple message is that Christ died on that cross for your sin. Do you want to believe that? Do you want to repent of your sin? No. I Why don't you want to repent? I don't follow you guys. Repent. You need to repent. I'm already repenting. You don't know. But to believe in Jesus for your Without salvation. The blood, Without the shedding of blood, bro. Where the name Jesus came from? What? In order for me to... to it's, it's in the Bible, bro. To pray and ask me, who translates this Bible? This Bible is translated book. So where the name Jesus came from? Listen, let me explain. This is the King James, right? It's the best translation you can have. You know why? Right? Because the Greek manuscripts, do you know what the Greek manuscripts have behind here? Do you know the Greek manuscripts? Right? It's called the Textus Receptus. And those, those Greek manuscripts can be traced right back to the early days of the Apostles. Okay. Where that name came from, where yeah. the name God came from, where the name Jesus came from, where the name Christ came from. Christ is Messiah. Read your Bible. The reason, the reason I ask you this Read your Bible. because we speak the original Hebrew and we know these names. That's why I'm asking you. This, where this came from. Is it in the Bible? This book is translated book. So someone changed the names while you translated. So where this name came from? Let me show you. Let me show you here. Let me show you. This is the King James, yeah? Paul an apostle, not a man, neither a man, but by Jesus Christ, God the Father. Now the word Jesus Christ is used in there, in that King James Bible. Right? The Greek is from the Greek manuscripts. And you can be absolutely assured that those are the best Greek manuscripts that you can have. So the Hebrew Israelites and anybody else who may argue with us or anything, witnesses or anybody, I can absolutely assure you that those are behind the Greek manuscripts. And the translators knew Hebrew and Greek better than every, any Israel, Hebrew Israelite. Have you heard of Sir, Sir, Sir Lancelot Andrews? Have you heard of him? The guy knew more languages than you've had at dinners. He's probably one of the greatest scholars that ever lived in Hebrew and Greek. And he was behind the translation of this. Right? Sir 
uh, Lancelot Andrews, right? He's one of the greatest scholars, right? I've, um, I've, I've not come except the house, lost sheep of the house of Israel. So for, for the Jewish nation, it, it, it came, it came primarily for the Jews. You know who is the lost sheep? Lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeah, that's who. In in, in 2017, according to the nations that asked, everybody, who are the lost? Everybody. Not anyone who does not, not have everybody. a relation. No one that far. doesn't have nation. Uh, nation? Here, there's a nation here. Okay, I'll, I've got, I've got, a question. I've got a question for you. Okay. I need to write. That you're, name. You're, you're challenging the King James, right? So, what Bible translation do you use? What Bible translation do you? Use? I use any Bible. Wait, 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 wait right a minute. Now, I told you from the beginning. I'm reading right. the Bible now. Right. Here's the King James. Right. You, you're challenging the King James. Right. What authority do you have? What Bible translation are you challenging the King James with? Have you got any tracks no. Yeah, yeah, they're all nine jobs. You haven't got one. So you're making a false claim, bro. Let me write the, the name down. Sir, Sir Lancelot Andrews. He was behind the translation of the King James, yeah? The great, one of the greatest scholars of all time in Hebrew and Greek. He knew more languages. Lancelot. Sir Lancelot, I don't know how you spell it. Okay. Andrews, Lancelot Andrews, yeah? Let's say, not Andrews. Yeah, Sir Lancelot, one of the greatest scholars in history on on Old and Testament. What Bible is that? This is King James, mate. You need to use the King James. It's the best one. Best in the Hebrew and the Greek. Yeah? All right, mate. All right, but just think about the message that my brother shared with you, because that's the main issue. I understand, but yeah. if, and, you, I don't, I don't, if you understand my language, you will surely understand all this book. I don't even need to read this. You do need to read it, bro. I don't even you need to read the Bible, bro. Because the Bible is the Word of God. It's a trans it's, let, let me ask you a question. Yeah, go on. So, let's say I came from, let's say, China. I'm speaking Chinese. For example. I don't know that. Alright, okay. And uh, I translated something from English to a Chinese. Right. right? Yeah. Originally was English, written in English, and that's habitation, that's where it came from. I understand what you're saying. You understand? Yeah. So, really? what you're my point. so what you're you saying understand is, my point. So what you're saying is things have been translated and been lost in translation and you're getting back to the original Exactly. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Exactly. But what I'm saying what Let I'm saying can, can I just finish? What yeah. I'm saying is yeah. when Jesus was in the synagogue and he read the scripture. Do you know what scripture he read? What? I don't know. He read the Septuagint. The Septuagint was not Hebrew. Listen, the Septuagint was Greek. Mm. So there, Jesus Christ gives his authority that we can use Bible translations, because he used the Septuagint. Listen, right? So, this is the closest to the Hebrew and Greek, mm. and I can guarantee on the names of Jesus, if you study it, you come back next week. On the names of Jesus and the names of God, right? It will be accurate. It will be it will be translated accurate and fairly. The reason can yeah? I tell you something? The reason I have a big issue with the names and all this translation is throughout the research I found out. You see these three lines here. Yeah, yeah. And from my language, I found out people that live in Israel today, they using. The mark that we put in cattle, in like camels and cows and sheep, we have a lot of sheep. Right. They're using the, our mark as an alphabet in Israel today. Right, right. People that live there today. So, throughout the research, I found that the letter A and B and all these letters in English came from my language. And not even just my language, from, I'm from a tribe of Berry. And in tribe of Berry, there's many branches. The branch that, uh, that governed the tribe, we call the, uh, the branch of Abba. Right, right. Now I'm finding out Jesus' tribe, Judah tribe of Abba, and we call Abba Father. That means, and literally means the same thing in my language. Right, okay. Not just one, I found out, wow, uh, it's crazy. I found right, out right, all right. this right. is too taken from me. Right, can I, can I explain to you? Yeah. yeah. The Old Testament, when Jesus goes, when the Lord goes into the synagogue, he reads the scripture, 
and he raised the Septuagint. Mm. Jesus nowhere ever attacked the Jews for corrupting the Old Testament. Mm. Nowhere. He never ever ever attacked them. Right? He actually confirmed what they believed about the Old Testament. Mm. Right? And so he quoted the Septuagint, which was a translation of the Old Testament. Secondly, Josephus, a Jewish, Jewish historian of that time, says there are certain books in the Old Testament that we have, and those are the books that we have today. So you have uh, Jesus, you have Josephus, right, that confirmed the Old Testament that we have today. We've also found manuscripts in the Dead Sea Scrolls that confirm that we have the Old Testament. Now in the New Testament, we have 5,000 ancient Greek manuscripts. So if anybody tries to corrupt 50 or 100, we've still got 4,900. If someone corrupts 1,000 of those, we've still got 4,000. If someone corrupts 3,000, we've still got 2,000. In other words, there's so many manuscripts that nobody can corrupt the text, right? And what I'm saying is, and the, the best Hebrew and the best Greek text, this is based on. And the best scholars that can translate into English. Now, modern translations have two methods. One is a literal and one is a form equivalent, which is they just get the idea of the translation. So if I said the blood of Jesus Christ, form equivalents would say uh, they put stuff in like uh, lamb's blood and they stick extra words in. But the literal translation in the Greek the translators would try to get it literal and say mm. the blood of Jesus Christ, right? Mm. So this is based on a literal translation. Okay. Modern Bible translations okay. are based on form equivalent. In other words, they just get the idea. And if they do that, they lose something. Mm. They will lose things because they're getting the idea and they're putting words in. But if you're doing a literal translation, you have to get it exact as, as best you can from the English to the Greek or to the Hebrew, yeah? And then and this is to the Greek best. to Hebrew, yeah? Can I just read right. Isaiah 53 to you? I've read that, but you can read it again if you want. I've read it, I've read it. I've read it, I've read it to him. If you read it. I've read it to him, yeah. yeah. I've read it to him. Because what I'm finding out is right now is... Read it to him again. Read it to him. Behold, my servant shall do prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Just as many were astonished at you, so his visage was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths at him. For what had not been told them they shall hear. And what they had not heard they shall consider. Who has believed our report? <laughs> to whom, and to whom is the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall go up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and everyone has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of his all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? He was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him, he has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of, of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he will divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Amen. Thanks, George. So that's what we're, that's what we're trying to share, bro. That's what we're trying to share, mate. We're trying to share. That right. message, that's what, what we're trying to do. What, what, what brand of Christianity you guys are? We're, we're just born again. Born again. Mm. Born again. Well, you see, 
Well, it doesn't matter whether what branch you are. The main thing is are you focusing on Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yeah, that's the main thing, and that's what we try to do. We're not. We we we, we can. You know, you probably know more about your particular position mm. than we do. Yeah. Mm, I know. So we're not here to to debate that or argue yeah, yeah, about that. I understand. The, the, I understand main, the, main, the, main, the main thing for us, I mean, I could study your... Uh, there are lots of videos of Hebrew Israelites around. I'm watching them. I'm and, not. and I could study them all day. Yeah. But the main thing for me, and, and what we're trying to do here, is just preach about Jesus and about coming into salvation in Him. And that's the main thing. And we can, we've can we got forgiveness, and we want you to have that forgiveness, mate. I, you, don't, you guys here in a Western... You don't understand where you come from. I'm literally I'm from a desert area. Right. And the thing that you guys preach in the Bible here, we've seen them in life. Our elders do. They can bring rain. They can whatever the the miracles you guys call it here. Bulletproof, night proof. Yeah. All this is stuff we've seen them. All. We have the original book there written in Hebrew. Have you ever seen have you ever heard of, okay, uh, okay. genocide of Darfur? Sudan. Genocide? Yeah, Darfur. No, no. Sudan. But, but, but you, wait a minute, you made a claim. You made a claim, but you've seen the Hebrew. We are the Hebrew. Oh, oh, yeah, that, hey. So, here's a question. Mm. We speak the language uh, and we have oh, the I'm going to put you to the test now. Okay. Here's the question. Okay. What book have you got? We have our book and we call it the book. Where? In, in Sudan. And, and, and what is it? Where is it? In Sudan, in our area. Yeah. If you know, that's and why I asked. That's why I asked. What you know manuscripts Sudan. are behind it? What? What manuscripts are behind this book? What? What written in? Yeah. In this book, yeah. we have in the New Testament we, the manuscripts for the New Testament are the Textus Receptus, the Greek manuscripts. Yeah. Mm. So you made a claim. I don't, I you don't made know. A so is. I can I say. Know. I can I don't say. Know what's manuscript I can say. My, my, I'm from the tribe of the Martians from planet Mars, right? Mm. And you're understanding the Bible wrong because you're translating it in wrong, wrong mm. Martian language, yeah? Mm. And I say, okay, well, show me the book. Mm. Huh? Yeah, I, I wait, don't wait, have wait, wait, wait. And you say, I got a book on planet Mars. And then I say, okay, what manuscripts are behind it? Mm. You say, I don't know. So because I can't believe anything you're saying, bro. You, I understand. You've got, you've got to put I the evidence. I understand I've, all you're saying. I've given you the evidence, yeah? I understand all you're saying, but. This is so deep that people here, they do not understand. If you live in a culture of this, because people now can read this book here in England or in America, yeah. but practically there's no environment that suit this book. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, you're, you're saying this like, is from a desert culture? No, no, no. no. Or from a, a, an Eastern culture? No, 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 no. What I'm trying to say is this book, the lifestyle here should be built based on the, based on this book, right? Right. But when you look around, the way they build the houses, right, right. The way people eat, the way people walk, the way people. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Right. It's right. not based on this book. So when you go, ah, this is so deep. But you do your research, you will find out Sudan. You will find out Darfur, yeah, genocide, Darfur genocide. And then you find out why. Because they are the oh, good dear people. Oh. Let me ask you a question. Mm. You've heard about my brother reading Isaiah 53, and I've read it, Isaiah 53. Mm. The question is this Do you have peace with God right now? It depends what I'm doing, what, which road I'm going. Well, well, let me show you, I've got peace. I'll show you why. It says in the Bible, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. It says in John chapter 1, verse 9, If you confess your sin, He is faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So, if we confess our sin, because of the blood of Jesus, mm. not because of me, mm. I have peace with God. And my friend, but that's, my that's friend, the all, all the things that we've been talking about, mm. and I've listened to you, I'm just dancing around everything you're saying and all I'm doing as I'm dancing around what you're saying mm. is I'm just trying to bring you back to that simple message that Jesus died for you. I know it's for is, me but that, I don't, I don't believe it's sense? for everybody. I believe it's for me, well, not for everybody. So long as you're trusting, that's the main thing to start yeah, with. Not for we everybody. can argue about 
everybody or whatever. Yeah. The main thing is for you to have that peace. That's for us. We so, know that for but us. But do you believe in today? Do you believe in today? Not your Jesus. Have my you Jesus. And believe in him. I believe in my Jesus, not your Jesus. Not the other people's Jesus. We have our own Lord. Oh, okay. That one that in the sky. The other people, it's just long. Anyway. Okay. God nice bless you. you. God bless you. Take care, bro. God bless you.